Yes team and welcome back to another video. Thanks very much for watching and I'm really really excited to share with you these tips and tricks today and this is going to be how to avoid these five cold email mistakes that are going to mess up your campaigns big time. So go ahead, watch this video and afterwards check your campaigns for these five things to avoid dealing with high bounce rates, low reply rates and really horrible nasty mean responses because we all know they just kill our vibe, they ruin our day and they're just not nice to receive at all. No one li likes to be told to go to themselves, you know? So let's avoid that by following these five tips. So the first thing that we're gonna do is to avoid all complexity with our cold email and cold outbound campaigns. Remember, simplicity scales and complexity clogs. Now, I just made up that last bit there. It doesn't sound very good, but I was trying to find something that was the opposite of simplicity scales and complexity clogs just sort of came to my head. But it is true. Complexity does clog up your systems. You don't need five campaigns. You don't need overly personalized messages and you don't need gimmicky tactics. And what I mean by this is with you don't need five campaigns. You don't need to break your cold outbound and outreach into five different campaigns with multiple A-B tests going on within each. You want to consolidate that all into one campaign and then run your A-B test so your A, B, C, D, E, F, G test within that campaign itself. And this is gonna allow you a much better view to look at that campaign and say, okay, this is working, that isn't working. Let's pull this out, let's try this, let's scale that. You don't need overly personalized messages. And what I mean by this is you don't need personalized lines for every single prospect you're reaching out to. This is gonna slow down your process massively and it's gonna limit the amount that you can scale to. There's no way, unless you're using AI to generate 10,000 personalized lines for every single prospect you're reaching out to. And if you do use AI, most likely those lines are absolutely crap and they don't look good, they look weird and they look freaky. And if you're paying an a VA to do this, then it's gonna cost you an absolute fortune and it's gonna take you ages to get this done. It's gonna take them so long to write 10,000 personalized lines. And you don't need any gimmicky tactics. You don't need any sort of weird things to try and grab people's attention. What you really need is a simple offer simple copy, simple personalization, and a simple campaign structure. You need a simple offer that cuts to the chase and it hits a pain point that's, that solves one or two problems, increasing revenue or saving someone's time. And if you can do both of these things, and, you, and then I always, as I always say, you have a killer, killer offer. You want simple copy that's less than 100 words, maximum three or four sentences, again, that cuts to the chase, that presents them with a problem that they're probably dealing with, and then presents your solution as an offer and has some, has some sort of case studies in there or social proof to back up your claim. And as I've already mentioned as well, uh, you know, simple personalization, you don't need overly personalized messages with an individual personalized line for every prospect. It's going to slow you down and it's not going to allow you to hit the scale that you need to really bring in consistent results. And also the same with the simple campaign structure as well. Consolidate it down, guys. Make it easier for you to read the data and put it into one campaign that you can then scale from there. Number two, this is a really, really simple one, but avoiding any links in your cold email is gonna allow you to hit the prospect's inbox and their main inbox and avoid that spam folder on a much higher rate. You should under no circumstances be sending cold emails with links in them as your first email. You're gonna get flagged, you're gonna land in spam, and honestly, no one in their right mind is clicking a link within a message from someone they've never heard from and has just landed randomly in their inbox. And it's just not a good way of building trust, so don't send over links to people. You could probably get away with it in your second email, but honestly, what I would do first is ask for permission to send over anything, send over something valuable, which is when then you can link it to them and send it to them once they've consented to it, once they've said yes, and they're much more likely to actually go ahead and click through it. And so you're not wasting your time sending random things and value to people that don't want it and don't need it. Number three, this one should be obvious, and if any of you guys are doing this, then honestly, I'm gonna come around your house and slap you around the back of the head. You should never, ever send cold email from your main domain. Cold email always comes with a risk of burning your domains. If you're not careful or if you follow bad practices, then you can honestly, you can blacklist your domain. And if you do that, then your main domain, you won't be able to communicate with your clients. You won't be able to communicate internally. It may affect your domain hosting, and it may affect everything else that you have your main domain connected to and your main email connected to. If you've got that connected to software, your bank, anything like that, then that could be affected and that could be compromised. So shield yourself, put a buffer in place and buy multiple secondary domains that you're going to use to send cold email. Number four, and this is to avoid repetition. Now, 
Cold email as a concept is a mass form of outreach. You should be sending thousands and thousands of emails to your prospects and to you know prospective prospects every single month. And if you do this without changing any of the syntax of your emails, and what I mean by this is keeping your template exactly the same, then there's a high chance that you're gonna get your account flagged and you're gonna end up landing in spam. So. What you need to do is understand the message of your offer and the message that you're kind of trying to convey to your prospect and find multiple different ways of writing that. And you can utilize this thing called spin tax that most of the main um, email service providers and email sending providers will allow you to access things like instantly, Lemlist, Mailshake, they all allow you to use spin tax. And what this allows you to do is spin the syntax within the email itself. Now I'm gonna drop a full video on spin tax, how to utilize it properly um, and how to incorporate it in your emails. And what it allows you to do in simple terms is send thousands of emails with the same message but different words within each email so that every email you're sending is completely unique and it really minimizes your chance of landing in spam. Now finally, what you wanna do here, this is to sort of tie it all together, and this is to avoid word vomit. What is the goal of cold email? Ask yourself this question. The goal is to elicit a positive response that eventually books a call or creates a sales opportunity. You do not need to tell the prospect every aspect of your offer. Say, for example, you run Facebook ads. You do not need to tell them that you run on a campaign budget optimization or an ad set budget optimization or whatever it is that you guys do in Facebook ads. You do not need to tell them that. You need to present them with something simple like a pain point that they're feeling ask them if they're you know they're happy with their current return on ad spend are they happy with their current cost per acquisition are they happy with their ad results as a whole and then you need to say something along the lines of the reason i ask is that recently we insert case study insert case study and i wanted to know if you'd be interested in finding out more you basically want to make it as simple as possible for these people to reply positively would you be interested in exploring this further is this of interest shall i send over some value your way something along those lines so that it's really simple for them to reply yes because once they've already given you that first yes they've replied they're much more likely to engage with you they're much more likely to communicate with you more often and they're much more likely to go ahead book a call and then you can put them through your funnel close them and turn them into a client so simplify your messaging simplify your cold emails and avoid word vomit but that's all of those points today guys and um, if you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments if you've got any questions let me know in the comments remember to like subscribe i'm going to be putting out loads of cold email content um, and remember run through your campaigns run through these five points and let me know what you guys get cheers thank you very much and have a great day